Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Please accept my obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Welcome to our session, the Advent, or the reading of the translations for the Advent of the Bhagavad Gita. So far, Guru mm -hmm. Maharaj, we have already read the, uh, four chapters uh, for the past one hour. Yes. Guru Maharaj, I'd like to give the talk now, Guru Maharaj. And before that, I think Meenachi Sundram Prabhu uh, like to say a few words. Oh. And welcome, uh, and welcome, Prabhu. Meenachi Sundram Prabhu. I Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Meenachi Sundram here from Klang, uh, Iskon Klang. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for your presence in our group here. This is the first time. We are taking such effort to do this advent of Sri uh, Bhagavad Gita so that in future we will have a continuity of this program. So with your blessings, Maharaj, uh, I think we will uh, be able to progress further, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, please accept our garland from the temple on behalf of the temple, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Galen Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you once again, Maharaj. We can continue with the class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, I can continue, Sri Devi. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. We are so fortunate to have Guru Maharaj here. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Nama Vanchakaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So today is the auspicious day in which Lord Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita more than 5,000 years ago at Kurukshetra. Of course, that was not the first time Lord Krishna was speaking the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is eternal knowledge, and Lord Krishna is continuously speaking the Bhagavad Gita. Even right now, Lord Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita in some other universe. So, we have to understand the nature of this transcendental knowledge, which we call as the Bhagavad Gita. That Lord Krishna is giving us the essence of religion. He's describing to us the main principles behind spiritual life and answering many of the important fundamental questions which arise in a person's mind, particularly when we're in a situation where we have to make decisions. Just as Arjuna found himself perplexed in the middle of a battlefield, having to fight against his relatives. But Arjuna was very fortunate because he had Lord Krishna as his companion, and he was also very intelligent, and he was able to approach Lord Krishna. As we heard in the beginning of the second chapter, Arjuna was saying that karpanya dosho pahata svabhava, that because of my miserly weakness, I am confused about my duty. And Arjuna is asking Lord Krishna to please instruct him. Arjuna had become confused about his about the religious principles. 
Of course, in the Kali Yuga, most people are not religious at all, but still they have to make decisions. And then when it comes to making decisions, we need to have some good knowledge. So from the Bhagavad Gita, we can get real knowledge. We can get knowledge about the true nature of the material world and the nature of our own self as well. And the nature of also the personality behind this world and the person who's ultimately responsible for this world. These are things which we generally don't think about. But the Bhagavad Gita awakens us to think about such issues. The Bhagavad Gita is very thought-provoking. In the course of discussing different decisions, Arjuna and Lord Krishna cover the five main themes of the Bhagavad Gita. They speak about, first of all, Ishwara, that there is a supreme controller behind the world. They speak also about Prakriti, the material nature. They will speak, in the course of Bhagavad Gita, they speak also about the living entities, the jivas, uh, the ordinary living entities as distinct from the Ishwara. And they speak also about time, kala. Time is a something which we're all under the control of. We don't like to think about it, but certainly time is there and it's affecting all of us. And then Bhagavad Gita also describes uh, Ishvara, Prakita, Kala, uh, Jiva, and one more thing. What is it? Um, nature. Huh? Five things, karma, one more. There's five main aspects of the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, karma. Karma, of course. Karma. Meaning actions or reactions also. <laughs> we have we all have some karma. Some people have a good karma and some have bad karma. We all actually, we all have a mixture of good and bad karma. And it's affecting all of us. The good karma brings enjoyment and the bad karma brings suffering. And so the nature of life is a mixture of both suffering and enjoyment. This is all due to how, we been, how we've been acting in the material world. We explained one of the topics of Bhagavad Gita is Prakriti, nature. That there is two kinds of nature. There is first of all dead matter, which is made up of the different elements like earth, water, fire, air and ether. But there's also a, another Prakriti, which are the living entities. Actually all of us are Prakriti. We're the superior prakriti. Dull matter is the inferior prakriti. It doesn't have any consciousness. But we living entities, we have consciousness. But still, we are prakriti. We are, we are not independent of the Ishwara. We're, we're, we are under the grips of the Supreme Lord. So we have consciousness, but unfortunately our consciousness is polluted. We're in, in this material realm, or we have polluted consciousness. And we think that the material energy, dull matter, is simply there for us to enjoy. We don't recognize who is actually the proprietor of all this matter. So. Lord Krishna explains how the living entities are trying to exploit the material nature and as a result of that, they're struggling very hard with their senses and the mind. 
It's our own fault. It's our own doing that we're struggling because we're trying to exploit the material energy. We're trying to claim the material energy for our own self, for our own enjoyment. But actually, it all belongs to the Ishwara, to the Supreme Controller. Nowadays, of course, people are often atheistic. They don't even believe in God. So God comes to them in the form of death. For people who are atheists, the Lord comes in the form of death. And as death, he takes away everything from them, takes away their own life. So that is for the atheist, but for the theist, for the, those who have a little better brain, they can understand that behind this creation, there is a controller, there's a supreme being, who we call Ishwara. There are many, you could say there are many Ishwaras, each country will have an Ishwara, each office has an Ishwara, every home there's an Ishwara, but Lord Krishna is the Param Ishwara. He is the controller above all controllers. We know there are 33 crore devas in the heavenly planets, and all of those devas are under the control of the Param Ishwara. Who, is, who we identify as Lord Sri Krishna. So there's one Ishwara and all others are his servants. All others, meaning all the jivas, all the other living entities. There's Vishnu Tattva and Jiva Tattva. Vishnu Tattva means those who are God on the level of God and Jiva Tattva means those living entities who are subordinate to the Supreme Personality. So we are jivas, we are subordinate to the Supreme, but we have a relationship with Him. We do have an eternal relationship with Him. And the whole purpose of Bhagavad Gita is to awaken us to that consciousness, to understand First of all, that we are, we are individuals, we do have a personality and we have our own nature, but at the same time we have problems. So Bhagavad Gita explains to us why we have difficulties. The difficulties come because we have forgotten our actual identity as spiritual beings. We identify ourselves simply as the body. We become lost in the world of illusion. Illusion, meaning we, we, we would simply often refer to as illusion as Maya, which is another energy of Lord Krishna. But there are two kinds of Maya. There is Mahamaya and there is Yoga Maya. Mahamaya is what most people are, are subjected to, most living entities. They're under the condition of total ignorance about their spiritual identity and their relationship with the Supreme. So that's Mahamaya. Maha, under Mahamaya, living entities even want to try to kill Krishna. But there, there's another energy of Krishna which we call Yoga Maya. We can understand the nature of this Maya by understanding things like electricity. Just like electricity can be used to heat, but the same electricity, the same current can be used to cool. So electricity can work in different ways. And similarly, Lord Krishna's Maya also works in different ways. One type of Maya is covers up Krishna to reveal him as some ordinary person and out of ignorance those who are demoniac they want to kill Krishna that is Mahamaya but there is also Yoga Maya which again covers up Krishna to reveal him as an ordinary person whom we can have loving relationship with and whom we can cultivate some uh, exchange loving dealings with. So that is called 
yoga maya. Devotees, they like, by, by practice of bhakti yoga, they come under the influence of yoga maya. And they're able to serve Krishna as a friend, or as a servant, or as a parent, or as a lover. There are different relationships. Just as in the material world, we have these different kinds of relationships. Someone's a servant, working maybe in a job, or maybe you're serving in a home, serving some wealthy aristocratic people. Someone else is on sakyaras, friendship, and they enjoy the friendship with Lord Krishna, just like Arjuna. Arjuna's qualification to hear the Bhagavad Gita was described, bhakto si me saka cheti rehasyam hi etad utamam. And Lord Krishna describes it, because you're my devotee as well as my friend, therefore I'm speaking this knowledge to you. So this, this was Arjuna's qualification to hear the Bhagavad Gita. Of course, this was Arjuna being put under some kind of yoga maya, because Arjuna had heard Bhagavad Gita before. Arjuna travels with Krishna in different places, in different universes. Arjuna will go with Krishna, and wherever Krishna goes, Arjuna will go with him, and Lord Krishna will speak the Bhagavad Gita. The, the two will be together. So it's very helpful for someone who is uh, uh, separated or in confusion, some doubt, don't know what to do. It's important for them to get proper association, proper guidance. So Bhagavad Gita provides that kind of guidance for all of us. It's an opportunity for all of us to hear about Lord Krishna. But before we understand Lord Krishna, you can see how this Bhagavad Gita is so nicely presented that in the beginning, Lord Krishna first of all describes who we, <coughs> who we are. Who, what is our identity? Because you want to understand Krishna, if you, if you don't know who you are, if you don't understand our own identity as spiritual beings, then we'll never understand Lord Krishna. So it's very important for us to first of all hear about our own identity. And this Krishna is covered in the second chapter where he described the difference between the body and the soul. Very basic knowledge but very, very important and also very difficult to grasp because we are conditioned souls. Bhagavad Gita recognizes we are conditioned souls. We are under the influence of the material nature. And we have been in this material world a very long time. So in order for us to come out of that conditioned nature, it takes some time. It, it's, it's not, because just like you have, a, if you have some disease and the de you've had that disease for a long time, it takes, it's longer, it's more difficult to cure it because you've had the disease for so long. In a similar manner, we have been conditioned, we have been in this material world longer than we care to even think. And because of our conditioning, we have to understand it takes some time for us to get out of that ignorance. And we have to hear from Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna is speaking for us the, the most basic knowledge. And he's speaking it in such an, a nice manner that everyone can understand. But still you'll see in the 18th chapter, Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, have you understood Arjuna? Now you have to decide what are you going to do? 
Lord Krishna doesn't push Arjuna that you have to do what I say, Arjuna. But rather, Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna that this is the situation. And then he says to Arjuna, now you decide, Arjuna. What do you want to do? Are you going to fight or not? And so this is important for us to appreciate that Krishna speaking the Bhagavad Gita is not like he's ramming it down our throat and say you have to accept it, but he's telling all of us this is the, these are the facts of life. This is the nature of the material world. And this, there's a process if you want to get out. So it's up to each and every individual to decide for themselves, what are you going to do? Lord Krishna, however, was asked by Arjuna to help. Please help me, yeah? Arjuna said, Shishyastiham sadimam tvam prapanam. Arjuna said to Lord Krishna that now I'm your disciple. I'm a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. So Lord Krishna has been instructing him, but at the same time, when it comes to making a decision, he asks Arjuna, now what are you going to do? Are you going to, set, are you going to fight or not? And Arjuna, after hearing the Bhagavad Gita from Lord Krishna, Arjuna becomes, he's convinced. He understands his position and the whole situation has become very clear to him. All of the illusion, all of the ignorance has all been cleared away. Just like when the sun comes out in the morning, all of the fog will be driven away by the powerful rays of the sun. If you come to a holy place like Mayapur, in the winter time, we often get some fog in the early morning. But as soon as the, f the sun comes up, then the fog will all be driven away. So all of the doubts, all of the illusions which we have, they're all driven away by the powerful knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, hearing the Bhagavad Gita. It's important for us when we hear the Bhagavad Gita, not to just hear it from anyone, but to hear it from the devotees. And it's important for us to not only just hear the text, but we should also hear the purports, because the, there are many editions of Bhagavad Gita, and they, different commentators, they may translate the text in a similar manner. The verses can be the same. This, the translation of the Sanskrit may be the same in many different editions, different commentators of Bhagavad Gita. But what makes the difference are the purports. Because when we get the purports from a Vaishnava, it will have a very different effect than hearing the purport from some Mayavadi. So, someone who's a Mayavadi equates Lord Krishna to illusion and he thinks the whole material world and everything is illusion and Lord Krishna is also illusion and everything is illusion. So some people are like that, they're in that unfortunate condition. Of course, everything is not illusion. We say, they may say Brahman Satyam Jagat Midya, but we say Brahman Satyam Jagat Satyam, <laughs> right? They are saying that the world, is a the world is false and only the Brahman is truth. But we say the world is true and the Brahman is also true. Yes, the world is true, but at the same time it is temporary. So we have to understand the distinction, the nature of this material world. And because it's temporary, we should understand this is not actually our real home. But the Bhagavad Gita is spoken to us to help to awaken us to knowledge of our real home, the place where we really belong. 
and Lord Krishna is inviting all of us to go there, to go back to him. And that's why he comes to this world. And this is why he speaks the Bhagavad Gita. Because he wants each and every one of us to come out of our little dream here in this material world. That we are thinking we are going to live here forever and I have my home and my family and my children and my pets and my this and that. And we are thinking we'll stay here forever. Nobody's making plans to get out from this world. And when, when, it, when the problems come, then they have difficulty to accept it. So we have to understand this message of the Bhagavad Gita is very essential for people. Before the problems come, we should understand the nature of this world that it is temporary and we do die we're all going to die each and every one of us is going to die we have to give up our body but we should be concerned after giving up this body where do we go that is important so bhagavad gita explains to us that if we are able to fix our consciousness on Lord Krishna at the end of life, then we can go to be with Krishna. We can get free from birth and death. We can free ourselves from all the miseries, the birth, the old age, the disease and the death. We give up this body, we want never to take birth again in the material world. And it's possible. But we have to understand the nature of Lord Krishna. We have to understand what is proper consciousness. So this is this this uh, day which we are observing. That of course is only one day. Lord Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita in some few hours on the battlefield at Kurukshetra. So we are celebrating that event many places devotees are reading bhagavad gita they're reading the bhagavad gita without the purports although we could give the vaishnava purports the mayavadis they give the mayavadi purports but we give the vaishnava purport which is very important however there's not a lot of time today we have to do many other things and today being Sunday also, there's a lot of programs going on, different events taking place. So we're very grateful that the ISKCON Klang has organized this nice program celebrating the speaking of the Bhagavad Gita. And of course, we hope every year it will go on. Actually, Bhagavad Gita as we said, Krishna speaking now some other place. So the Bhagavad Gita is meant to be discussed all the time. Our ISKCON program is that every morning we will study Srimad Bhagavatam and then in the evening we read the Bhagavad Gita. And we will take one verse of the Bhagavad Gita, we will read the Sanskrit, we will read the word meaning, we will read Prabhupada's purport, and then devotee, a senior devotee, will give the comment on that verse. Usually we will begin from the first verse of the Bhagavad Gita. And you can hear Prabhupada's lectures. Prabhupada himself, when he was in the UK, in our London centre, he was lecturing every evening on Bhagavad Gita from the first verse. He went right through the first chapter every day giving class on one verse and speaking about the significance of that verse and the different points which were made in it. So it's nice for devotees to hear Prabhupada speaking on Bhagavad Gita. And after hearing Prabhupada, then we should speak ourselves. We should have every evening classes on the Bhagavad Gita. If you're not having class in the center, then you should have, you can do a class like we're doing today online, or you can do a class in your home. You simply get a few people around you, 
You don't need a lot of people, you just can have one person and you can get free of all the bondage of material life. All right, so we will stop here today. I will stop anyway and we will ask there's uh, Sri Devi Maharaji, you have uh, many other chapters to go on. I don't want to take more time. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for telling us the essence and the importance of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, some of the participants here are new. They are from the reading class that uh, Guru Maharaj uh, gave me that very nice service. And I had the good fortune also last year to be in Shilpa Mataji's uh, reading class. So in fact, I... Uh, learned a lot on how uh, you know reading classes go so i carried on my own december last year guru maharaj 23rd december last year so now we are up to because we read our, like what guru maharaj said the verses and the translations and purports and discussion so now we are at uh, what you call uh, chapter four we have finished chapter four chapters going to finish chapter four and moving on to chapter five in, in that reading class so four of them are here from that reading class and uh, and i'm very happy that guru maharaj could come into the class and spare the time because i know the schedule is very tight because guru maharaj is in joho now and we look forward to seeing guru maharaj in uh, in kl in sgmkl as well as in uh, iskon clang we're looking forward to seeing guru maharaj there Miss Conkling. So may I just ask whether anybody has any questions? Anyone has any questions to ask Guru Maharaj? Maybe one or two questions with regard to Bhagavad Gita, what Guru Maharaj presented just now. Uh, Guru Maharaj, maybe I can ask one question. There are some people in the reading group who actually also simultaneously go to other Bhagavad Gita uh, discussion sessions by by uh, Maya Vedi philosophers and all that. Um, so uh, if the person simultaneously listening to different Bhagavad Gita's, what is the impact on the person, Guru Maharaj? Well, it depends on how well you're educated in the Bhagavad Gita. You, if you hear from other people, then certainly it can have a poisonous effect. Just like chanting Hare Krishna mantra, the Hare Krishna mantra is, of course, very good to chant. But if you hear the mantra from people who are not devotees, from people who are Mayavadis and who have impersonal ideas about Lord Krishna, then the effect will be poisonous. Just like milk touched by the lips of a snake has a poisonous effect, so the same way the chanting of Hare Krishna can have a poisonous effect on a devotee. So similarly, hearing the Bhagavad Gita from people who are not devotional, they will often put, the, they will give their own mental speculation and they will give their own interpretations of the message of Lord Krishna which is not according, which will not be according to the parampara. So you deviate from the parampara, you make some changes, you bring in something new and like that. And so then the, the whole effect is lost because it's very important to understand, as Krishna said, to understand his birth and his activities. Janma karma chame divyam that Lord Krishna's birth and activities are all transcendental, they're not material. And so unfortunately you do get a lot of people who comment on the Bhagavad Gita and they will comment on Lord Krishna as some ordinary person. They don't understand his transcendental nature. And this is very detrimental, very harmful to anybody cultivating devotion. So you have to be very careful about hearing from people. You want to know what is their authority? On what basis are they qualified to speak? Have they been initiated in the parampara? Are they coming in a parampara or are they just some speculator? 
Just like you go to a doctor, you want to be sure the doctor is qualified. There is not just some quack, but he's actually qualified to teach, to guide. Hare Krishna Prabhu, I have a question. Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, can I ask you? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I've been I've been a vegetarian since four years old, and I'm a Vaishnava since four years old. I've been into Krishna consciousness since four years old, and I have a dog. Since small, I've been a dog lover. So I I since I have a dog, I I give them meat to eat. I feed them meat. So, um, do you regard me as a Mayavadi or do you regard me as a, as a Vaishnava? Well, you're not a pure Vaishnava. Ah, um, I see. You're trying to be a Vaishnava. So, so do you put me into a category of a, a Mayavadi or am I a Vaishnava? You're not a Mayavadi unless mm -mm. You, Mayavadi means that you think Krishna comes from the the Brahman or the Lord Krishna is a manifestation of the Brahman and Mayavadis think the form of Krishna is Maya and the whole world is uh, Maya. And so Mayavadis have their own thinking. They, they, don't, they see Krishna as an ordinary person. They don't see him as a divine person. But you're not a pure Vaishnava either because a pure Vaishnava will not give meat to any dog, any dog. You may have dogs, that's one th another thing. First of all, we, you, your, a Vaishnava won't keep dog in the house. You don't bring dogs into the house because dogs can be, they, that's not where they belong. They're meant to, they're supposed to stay outside. Your principles of cleanliness are going to be ruined by the presence of a dog in the home. Because dogs are going to cast hair, the hairs fall from their bodies and so on, and then the, you know, the, the, they will pass on so many ways. And as you, you, just the things which you do with the dog also, you're feeding it meat, it, it, it's not necessary. There are dogs other places, we don't give them meat. They, they don't have to eat meat. You want to have... You want to be kind to dogs, we give them prasada. You're not being kind to your dog, you're giving it meat. That is not Vaishnava. A Vaishnava will give his dog prasada. So we, don't, we don't mind being kind to dogs. We can live, but you want to liberate the dog. You should give it prasada. But but my dog, if I had to give it uh, any vegetarian food for a long time, it gets uh, it it becomes sick. That's because you give it meat. Oh. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for your explanation. Maharaj. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. thank you for the question. All right, Sri Devi, so thank you very much. We'll let you go on with the Bhagavad Gita recitation. I'm also listening. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. <clears throat> uh, Guru Maharaj? Is Guru Maharaj here? Yes, for sure. No, 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 Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, will it be possible when Guru Maharaj is free to just come into the reading class? Wanted to introduce you to the participants of the reading class because uh, one person, uh, two persons have started chanting. So I just wanted Guru Maharaj to come in. Uh, okay, no, okay, but not today. Yeah, yeah. Another day, next time, Guru Maharaj. I'll yeah. talk to Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Hare Krishna.